We've made it to the last session, everybody. Um, unbelievable uh, to see and hear all of the stories from all of these different leaders today. Um, I was messaging Courtney and Kelly during the event and personally, I'm having a moment, maybe it's recency bias, but this has probably been the most rewarding event of, of my entire career, um, or at least one of these. I mean, this has been amazing. All the hard work um, that has gone, I need to thank Courtney and Kelly before we even start closing for helping make this event possible. And for all of the uh, individuals who presented and prepared and I mean, just unbelievable. And I have to thank you all. I mean, who, who does it love? a uh, good, you know, Jay-Z and Beyonce uh, gift. But thank you all for being here today, being active in the Slack channel and the community. Um, just to share, we had over 1,100 people sign up for this event. Um, really unbelievable. And it just continues to show that there's a need to invest in, in pre-sales leaders. Um, I've, got, I've already got a couple ideas on things I want to do with all the videos and content that we have from today. Um, those uh, uh, videos will be available one week from today. But a couple of things. I want to actually chat with Courtney and Kelly just to talk about the event today. Um, you know, there's been a lot of effort and energy that's been put into this. Somebody asked how many hours went into the prep for the presentation. Surprisingly, I think most of us only did one dry run, um, sometimes two, but we really worked together, collaborated well together and kept a great framework. So, um, Courtney, let's start with you. Like, is there one thing that really resonated with you uh, above all else that you'd like to share? Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad we talked about this concept of building a diverse board of directors or like board of mentors around you. And those mentors could be folks that are more experienced in tenure. Those could be those friend tours, like I mentioned, <laughs> plugging this term. But I <laughs> that think was so great. That's gonna like, that's gotta be a, a trending hashtag. <laughs> Right. We're going to we got to create a Slack emoji after this. Um, but I like this concept of having um, a group of people around you with various viewpoints that you can tap into at various points of your career, whether you're thinking about making a change, uh, stepping into a new role, transitioning industries, folks that you can tap into for advice and guidance, especially um, unbiased guidance, uh, folks outside of your organization, folks outside of even just your role. They can help guide you. I think it's really important. Some of like how you call your mom or your best friend when something's going on. You want to have those folks in your Rolodex, for lack of a better word. I know Rolodex is like really old school, but folks that you can tap into when you need them and um, having more than one is just so important. Well, that's, that's great perspective, Courtney. Kelly? Uh, if, if anyone knows me, and if you don't know me, that you will. Uh, my, I, I think one of the biggest uh, topics of, of interest to me is imposter syndrome for so many reasons. And I think it was Syrah that said it in our very first session this morning, you know, you've got this image as you're growing up of, of what a leader is. And then suddenly you become said leader. And all of a sudden you're like, wait, they, but they seem so amazing. And they seem like they've got it all together. And I don't feel that way. And, um, there were so many comments throughout the session today from men, women, you name it, everybody talking about imposter syndrome. And I mean, you look at this list of leaders that have been speakers today and the amazing folks in the chat in Slack today, and I'm automatically intimidated by them. I mean, they work for these amazing companies. They've got these amazing titles. They've got just this incredible background. And to hear them say that is it, it's it's honestly it's it's really valuable and I'm very 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 thankful for a setting like this where we can be so raw and so open and honest because it's something that needs to be talked about um, and we need to be there for each other especially in the SE community uh, that, that, that's great and very well put by by you Kelly and and by both of your perspectives I, I think for me realizing that there is just no one size fits all um, component and different people are going to have different perspectives and that's totally okay. Uh, but it's good to also just talk things out with people and just understand their perspective and their experiences because they'll help you formulate your own opinion on how to handle things. And I think the, the three of us had talked about this like 
when we first started playing this event, like I think about the advice and things that I, I did and approached business, you know, five, 10 years ago and how different it is now, but it, it, life's an evolution, right? And continuous improvement and growth is really what it's all about. You know, I've, I've continued to say through Pre-Sales Collective that, you know, you could be doing this job for 15, 20, 25 years. There's always something to learn. There's always something to learn. And I think um, hearing people talk about that today um, really, really resonated with me and made sense. Um, one thing before we go to the next, what was uh, a learning for the two of you around this event? I mean, we've we've been planning for about 45 days. I'm putting you on the spot. Um, anything from a, a learning perspective that you'd like to share? I mean, I already knew this. I'm pretty sure you don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, not about me. Not about me. So... <laughs> I, I, I will say that um, my my takeaway to start is that I think SEs will rule the world at some point because uh, the way we everyone approached their prep, approached their thought process, uh, approached you know their their you know really everything for this event. Um, it's not like we're all marketers or we're you know naturally just account executives or solutions engineers and. I think everyone did a fantastic job for this event. And it just shows how multidimensional people in this role really are and how how critical they are to organizational success. So that that's my personal takeaway. I would second that and want to take a moment to thank all of the amazing panelists and contributors that we had today. It's no surprise that when you task a solutions engineer with presenting to uh, almost a thousand people that they would be buttoned up and polished and come with a really strong perspective. Oh. And so um, not that that was a surprise or something that I learned, but um, this is an incredible community. And I think we all have each other to lean on, even if we're not in the same spaces, same industry, selling the same type of products. There's so much to learn from each other and also a lot of shared experiences. Uh, to Kelly's point around imposter syndrome and feeling a little bit alone, especially in this isolated remote environment, like, I feel so supported in this moment, having this community around me um, in a way that I might not have felt necessarily a year ago when I was like in an office environment. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Kelly? No, I, I think this this last year has been a, a challenge and that's that's an understatement. But yeah. one of the, the silver linings that I, I, I try to look for is the perfect example is this session today. I mean, if this were non-COVID, if COVID didn't exist, perhaps this would have been an event that we tried to put on in person. And that would have been you no know, travel costs and more time away from family and out of the office and having to get approvals and the ability to be able to have over a thousand people come to a session like this for free and share this information. Um, again, I, I got to look at this as, as a huge silver lining to this, this oh. crazy last year. Very well said. Thank you both so much. I, I, I was texting Courtney and Kelly throughout the event, but I mean, we could not have done this without the two of you, all of your energy and effort. And thank you so, so much for today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Had a blast. Absolutely. We're going to have to do it again. I mean, we're going to have to. Do I don't it. know. I need at least 45 days, James, to recover. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We got a couple of things uh, from an announcement perspective and, and some information we want to share. So, the original event had the speed networking, but we could not hold all of the um, attendees with a good experience, right? We wanted to really focus on the exp experience. A couple people have, have complimented us on our ability to stay on time. That was our biggest priority today. And I feel like we absolutely nailed it. And so the last thing we wanted was to have a poor experience when it came to speed networking. So if you're in the Slack channel, uh, which I see almost 300 people are, um, you will be paired in groups of threes tomorrow via the donut bot. And would love for you to introduce yourselves to those two other people and schedule time to connect. Um, over the next week, talk about your learnings and what was impactful for the event and feel free after you meet to, to share back into the channel. We'll keep this channel live um, and active within the pre-sales collective. Now, um, I mentioned it a couple of times in Slack is I, I truly believe in a culture of feedback. I mean, it was one of my first podcast episodes with Nithi Shaw, and you're going to get a link to a, this um, a survey right after this event. And please let us know how we did. It's anonymous. 
And so you can be radically truthful. That's what we care about around here. Um, there is a place that if you want us to follow up, we absolutely can. But I'm going to ask that you please fill this out and give us some feedback on this event so that we can continue to do these and do these um, and relentlessly execute on these types of events. I have a call to action. I have a call to action and I have an ask of the community. So we have um, some people on here. I'll continue to post this in Slack. But one of the things that we've done with Pre-Sales Collective is continue to raise awareness via LinkedIn and, and, and social. And so my challenge to you know, the people that are still here is I would love for you to go on LinkedIn, post about your favorite session, one of your biggest takeaways, a light bulb moment, and tag Pre-Sales Collective and hashtag Pre-Sales. We're continuing to try to bring awareness um, on social. I've literally, during this event, had at least a dozen people message me to say, hey, I, I, I heard of this event, I heard of this conference, how do I join? Or I saw my coworkers liking a comment. Um, and that's that's what's so amazing about the power of networking. And so I'd love for that challenge to be in LinkedIn. If you don't wanna post on LinkedIn, you don't feel comfortable, post it in Slack, post it in the Slack environment. Uh, being vulnerable is, it is extremely important um, in this. Now, a couple of people had brought this up and I just wanna briefly highlight it. Um, what we've been doing over the last year with Pre-Sales Collective um, to me has, has been really, really amazing. It's been so rewarding watching this community come together. I mean, our Slack environment is 4,500 people. You know, there are almost 11,000 people signed up on the Pre-Sales Collective. And what I forgot to mention in the opening is today is the one year anniversary of our first webinar last year. We're about a year and a week or a year and two weeks old. And so I feel so fortunate and thankful to be here with all of you a year later. And we continue to want to invest in pre-sales professionals because as I mentioned in the opening, um, if you weren't here, is I truly believe that this role is going to be the most important role in sales as buying changes over the next five to 10 years. Uh, it, it's just such a critical component and no offense to our, our sales peers, uh, but a lot of times that, that factor of trust doesn't always exist with sales reps. And it really is, is at work with what we do. And so we're continuing to invest in leaders and we have our pre-sales leadership collective, which we announced in February. Um, it is a paid membership group, but the good news is that most of um, companies are, um, are paying for their employees memberships as professional development. Uh, so it's, it's been really cool. It's $50 a month uh, paid up front, but I just want to highlight some of the things that we've been doing because we've done a, a lot of content uh, geared toward leaders and geared toward building out um, this audience because we, we truly believe that if we want to move pre-sales uh, forward as a profession, we need to make sure that we're enabling everybody, individual contributors, frontline leaders, executives as well. I had somebody the other day tell me, I've been doing this for 35 years. You can't teach me anything. And I, I said, so how many uh, women and people of color do you have on your team? And he told me uh, one out of 35. And so I said, we could probably teach you a little bit of something uh, and help you you know, build that up, right? And I firmly believe that, that there's something for everybody uh, with the Leadership Collective. And so I'm just gonna go through a couple of, of slides on some events that we've had recently. So Jeff Margulies, who's uh, on our advisor board, and um, did some work on pre-sales as an org. Marjorie Abdelkrim, who is on our pre-sales leadership collective council, uh, managing poor performance in the pandemic. Uh, Alicia Cruz has an event coming up in May around personal branding for pre-sales. Uh, Josh Arnoff, who was one of the first 200 employees of Salesforce, is gonna be talking about scaling pre-sales with culture and process. Um, Zach Lauric held an event around effective pre-sales recruiting and hiring, which we're continuing to run again in EMEA and APJ. Um, we have uh, Adriana Jimenez talking about building and managing global pre-sales teams. Uh, Steve Klein uh, held a session on the role of pre-sales and AE enablement. Uh, Paul Baptiste, this is a big one today, right? Uh, talks about reverse mentorship, the what and the why. And again, we have a justification letter. We're actually uh, piloting a mentorship program that it just got sent out today and we'll be met, uh, launching this over the next month, month and a half, because you heard it all today. Like we really want to continue to allow people to have that sp safe space, uh, continue to invest in their growth and their development. Uh, one of the more exciting things that I waited to the end to announce today is that pre-sales enablement is soft launching right now. 
Um, so we, uh, Gokul, uh, led a project called Technical Enablement, uh, built by the community, and we've had, had we've had 800 pre-sales professionals take that training over the past five months. It's just an introduction to technical skills. So over the last three months, we've been working with an instructional designer, Pavel Martin, Travis Strickland, and Kelly Riley in terms of creating pre-sales enablement. And so we believe that um, these three courses and on-demand courses via Thinkific are going to be great for any pre-sales professional. Uh, those that want to get into this profession and those that are already here, uh, effective sales partnerships, value-based selling, and stakeholder management. That's on our website at presalescollective.com slash education. We're going to be launching this in the newsletter on Monday, but we really, really are going to be investing in the enablement of, of all pre-sales professionals. And so how, however long you've been doing this, I, I would encourage you to check this out. Um, the on-demand content is good, it's interactive, and you'll be utilizing Slack as well. If you're not signed up for demo days, uh, registration closes on the 9th. We're having a global, pre, uh, global demo competition. There are almost 150 people signed up from across the globe. Uh, it's a one-month uh, event, and I can't tell you the specifics about the finals, but it, it's getting pretty, uh, pretty interesting. So you can sign up individually or as a team of three. Uh, you won't be demoing your own software products. We'll give you specifics on the prompt, presalescollective.com slash demo days. Uh, first place does have a $4,500 prize, $3,000 for second place, $1,500 for third, including trophies. And everyone who participates gets a t-shirt. So um, I've already ordered mine. So hopefully you'll, we'll see you there. Um, as always, Presales Collective has all of our events on Luma, lu.ma slash PSC. We're putting all of our events here. We have a number of webinars throughout April and May. We also have the book club and a couple of things that happened today that aren't on here just yet because uh, we want to announce it today is we're doing some workshopping. Uh, we are going to be having an imposter syndrome workshop in May, and we're working on a feedback workshop for May or June as well. And so those are going to be great events uh, to, to really you know, learn about those topics and, and connect with your peers. So be on the lookout for those. A couple of times today, we've talked about programs. Our WISE program is in full effect. So that group um, is doing amazing work for Women in Solutions Excellence. Uh, Lee Johnson is leading our D E squared I program because Lee made a great point that it shouldn't just be equity or quality. So we're, we're running a new program now um, for all those who've raised their hand to be on the council, we're, we're finalizing that. And we're also rolling out a, a pride program for those um, who want to connect with others um, in that in that field and in that grouping, uh, it will be separate from our DEI program, but more information coming on that uh, in the coming weeks. One of the last things I have to say is if you haven't checked out Presales Collective Local, we have 23 chapters today, uh, today and even Dallas just announced that they're actually meeting in person uh, in the coming weeks. And so we'll continue to uh, get ready for the day that we're allowed to all be in person have in-person events and, and support you locally. Uh, just a quick announcement, again, to thank our partners, Reprise, Troops, Avneo, and Gong for making this event happen. Again, thank you all for being here. Thank you to Courtney and Kelly for running a flawless event. Thank you to all our panelists and presentation. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody.